So good to see you all here tonight. And as I was preparing this message, I just wanted to pray that God brought lots of people here tonight. <laughs> and actually, he answered my prayer. So you're not here by accident. And before we start, I have a story to share with you. There was this um, auntie in the village, and she knew the word okay. And her child came to her and said, Mom, can I go to the concert? Okay. And she said, okay. And, she, and the child then asked, can I have 5,000 real? And she said, okay. And so the child waited for a long time and then thought, nothing happened. What does okay actually mean? She, and the auntie said, oh, it means I don't have any money, you can't go. So we want to pray tonight that we understand and we don't just say okay. <laughs> Let's pray. Yeah, God, we just thank you for your word tonight. That you call each of us here tonight. And this is such a special topic to your heart. Because you died for our sins. So we welcome you to speak through this message. And open the hearts of those listening. We give this to you in Jesus' name. Amen. So before we start, let's watch this video. And we see in this video the heart of a mother that loves her child. And even though this baby doesn't know who she is yet, she doesn't know anything. She can't talk, but her mom loves her. And and it's the same way with Jesus because even if we don't know who he is, he still loves us so much that he gave his life for us. And we are the joy of God. And we don't have to do anything more to make God love us. And God wants to have spend time with us. And, and today our topic is about how worth our, our value and our worth. Because we are priceless and he loves us more than anything. But our sin made um, Push Jesus to die on a cross for us. And 
the Bible says, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And all of us have sinned. And sin, the result is death. And if it's not us dying, it's someone else has to die on our behalf. Not just a normal person's death to cover our sin, but it had to be the Son of God himself. And Jesus had never sinned. But Jesus died a horrible, painful, torturous death that no one would ever want to die. And after they tormented and tortured him for hours, and as he was about to die on the cross, Jesus said, it is finished. And he had spent all his life, 99% of it, and then he had just one little bit left, and he said, it's done. And he was so happy because he, he basically said, child, now you're free and we can have a relationship because I did it. And now we can have a relationship personally together. Because when he was at his worst pain, all he could remember was how much he loved us. You know, when you're in incredible pain, do you feel like you want to smile at people? Honestly, I have a grumpy face if I'm even hungry. And all Jesus thought of was not the pain, but now I can be with my children. And in the book of Mark, it said that the curtain was torn in two. From the top to the bottom. And because back in those days, the glory of God had to be concealed from the sin of man. And anyone who would enter this holy place would die. And this curtain was the only thing holding us back from death, from the glory of God. He was so holy. But as Jesus died on the cross, and the moment that he died, this curtain was torn from the top to the bottom. And now we have the freedom to directly meet, and we have access to God directly. Let's watch this short video together.
Jesus died on the cross for us. And we have freedom now. And Jesus took all the burden on himself. If he had not died, we would be the ones who deserve death. And because we've sinned, we were not able to meet with God directly. But because of the goodness of God dying on the cross, he uh, tore that curtain. That curtain is now torn because of his death. And now we have nothing blocking us or hindering us from the presence of God. But sometimes we have things in our hearts that continue to be like a curtain between us and the presence of God. Jesus wants to have relationships so much with us that he gave his, his life. 100%. And we don't have to do anything else, just go to Jesus. Some of us, maybe we feel like we have done, made too many mistakes and this is like a barrier between us and God. Maybe our barrier is we're just so busy, we don't have time to pray. We are so busy, we don't think about reading the Bible. Maybe it's your phone, and I go home, and I'm thinking, oh, I'll just turn it on for a minute, and then it's two hours later. And how do you think God's heart feels when we do this to God? We can personally spend time with Jesus. But we forget, or we get busy. And as I've been preparing this message, I just felt God kind of convicting me personally. And about a month ago, I deleted my TikTok and my Instagram. And I've had such a good time with God. <laughs> and sometimes we need to just throw it. So Jesus died on the cross and in Matthew, the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. So Jesus died, and this is what happens. So imagine your grandma or grandpa and your friends had already died, and now they're alive again and coming to face you. So Jesus dies, and then there's thousands of people that come alive, and they're, they believe in Jesus. Because they saw something with their eyes. And in the video, maybe we saw one of the centurions who had been crucifying Jesus. 
God made that young man so lap pray Jesus. God from mad got so long more that pray Jesus. So he's the one who's crucifying Jesus. God made so lap pray Jesus. But then no pay the man car. Oh, then the car long car. The chief man that the two are praying to win. And then he sees what happens when Jesus dies. God the chief man that the two are praying to win. God so lap pray Jesus. But then God chief praying that the slap pray Jesus. The chief man that the two are choking. So. Even though he succeeded in crucifying Jesus, he was like a failure because Jesus won the victory on the cross. And in Mark, it says this. Mark chapter 4, verse 38. Mark chapter 4, verse 38. Mark chapter 4, verse 38. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, "Surely this man was the son of God." Can you imagine? He just got done killing Jesus, and he's like, "I'm going to die." I'm going to die. 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 What would you do? Like how how bold would you have to be to make a statement like this? He said that this was the Son of God. The Bible says that those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God will receive salvation. I think this guy got saved. He just killed Jesus and got saved. You know, I don't think he was really worthy of salvation. But you know what? Our lives are a mess, just like that centurion. We don't know what people are good and what people are not good. People hurt us. We hurt other people. We don't want to forgive people. We do all sorts of things. We don't want to. Uh, we should not be doing. And if we compare ourselves to this centurion, we're not so different. But because he believed that Jesus was the Son of God, he received salvation. Because Jesus died for him too. He died for anyone who wants to believe in him. He died already for our sin. No matter what kind of a person we are, no matter what kind of mistakes we've made, we just have to dare to believe that he would die for us. And he has victory as he rose from the dead and we live in victory because of this. And I want you to imagine this picture. Sometimes you think, oh, God, he chose this one, but not this one. But actually, Jesus, we can compare it like he died to buy us the plane ticket to heaven. So Jesus, he spent his life, he paid for the ticket already with his life. And he wrote our name on it. Very clearly. Maybe it even has your, pic your passport picture on it. But it's our choice if we want to receive this ticket to go to heaven or not. God already bought the ticket. It's bought. 
He already spent everything he had to buy that ticket for us. Do we dare to give the little that we have to Jesus to receive his free gift? This is what Romans says. This is in Romans chapter 6 verse 19. He, he died that we could live in the glory of God. Do we dare to give him our lives after all that he paid? Do we allow him to be our righteousness? Do we dare to allow him to erase our sin? Do we dare to call his name Jesus? He is our God because he, he chose to forgive our sin. I want to invite you to stand. And I want us to think about this word. His death on the cross. To buy our ticket to heaven. He gave up his life that we could be free from sin. He wants to take our sin away as we give him our sin. And maybe you feel like this word tonight is for you, but you don't dare to pray. And God, I pray for every barrier to come down between us and you in Jesus' name. And we want to humble ourselves under the glory of God. And if you feel like you want to allow Jesus to forgive your sin tonight and buy that ticket and receive the ticket that he already bought to heaven, come up to the front.